What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with a comprehensive guide to how you can best approach the large list of objectives to unlock the Solstice of Heroes armor for 2020. And so if you want a bit of a look ahead and a guide for how to get the most from your playtime, unlocking all of the armor upgrades relatively quickly, we'll cover that in this video with some kind of strategies for maximum efficiency, as well as some details on how the armor works the various states, glows, ornaments, and all that good stuff for the event. So timestamps will be down below as well, guys, if you want to jump to particular classes and sets. And if you guys do enjoy the video, a rating below really does help me out. But otherwise, let's get into it. For a quick look initially at how things work this year, as always, we need to upgrade the armor sets through various stages. So we start with the renewed set that'll come with a series of different objectives. We complete them to unlock the majestic set, which is the first legendary set. And we actually need to do all of the upgrades to make the legendary set during the event this summer. However, the final step once you have the legendary version is to unlock a magnificent set with the white glow. And to get this, there will be additional objectives, but these can be completed after the event ends. So basically, if you get at least the legendary set during the event, you can continue to do the final set of upgrades later on. We'll cover the objectives in a moment, but we should mention that once you have the majestic set, you can also purchase universal ornament versions of the armor, which can be applied to other armor pieces in the future. But additionally, they also have a colored glow to match your equipped subclass. Bungie also announced that with the stasis element coming in November of this year, if you pick up the universal ornaments this summer, the stasis colored glow will actually be supported on that armor later on this fall. Now, let's speak about unlocking the various upgrades for this year and some specific strategies to get everything done. Of course, we need to access the initial armor set, complete the quest steps and more minor objectives. But the renewed set is really where the grind starts to begin. Objectives are similar for each class, but slightly mixed up. So instead of listing all of the individual objectives for the armor, I've put together a list of the kind of best route to take in order to get all of those objectives done with the individual requirements for each class. And so this should be a good reference list. Initially, for the renewed set on any class, we'll need to run five strikes. So jump into the strike playlist, and while we're running the strikes, get 50 headshots and collect elemental orbs. And you'll need to focus on being on a solar subclass and collecting solar orbs as a warlock or a titan, and then arc subclass and orbs for hunters. Next, run five crucible or gambit matches, and we'll need to defeat 25 guardians, which is probably fastest to do inside of PvP, but also collect arc orbs as a warlock, void as titan, or Solar as a Hunter, which will be a bit quicker inside of Gambit with more PvE enemies. Up next, it'll be worth jumping into multiple aerial zone runs. Here we'll need to collect Solstice packages and run Void subclasses on Warlocks, Arc on Titans, or Solar on Hunters, while making subclass and ability kills. We'll need 10 Solstice packages for that particular step, and of course they can be found inside of the aerial zone by opening chests after defeating bosses. Also for the renewed set, We'll need to complete five adventures, so when you're running these, it's worth getting super kills, precision kills, and collecting orbs. The same can be said when you complete five public events. Any variation of public events will do for this step, but make sure you're getting plenty of the super or precision kills, as well as collecting orbs for your other requirements. And then also for these armor sets, there'll be a different enemy focus, so warlocks with any leftover cabal kills can farm them in the South Mars Lost Sector, the Madim Subterrane. Titans can farm Hive on the North Mars Lost Sector, which is the Core Terminus, and Hunters can farm Fallen in the EDZ Church Lost Sector, the Atrium. And so essentially that list right there is a kind of best route to take, I suppose, in order to progress on the renewed armor set, of course with variations for specific classes. But yeah, running everything in that list is going to get you most of the way through that renewed set, and maybe you'll just have a couple of objectives to clean up at the end. Now though, let's speak about the Majestic set, this is kind of the basic legendary version of the armor. We'll have a similar list for each class for this particular section of the video, but using the Titan Majestic set as an example. For the helmet, you have to complete 10 Gambit matches, get 100 Guardian defeats with Arc weapons, and collect 1000 orbs. The Gauntlets need 10 Heroic Public Events complete in, 100 Ability kills, and 20 Boss kills. The chest piece requires 600 kills in the Strike playlist, 300 Fallen kills, and 200 Combatants defeated. And then for the boots, we've got 2,000 elemental final blows, 100 solar melee final blows, and 300 playlist strike orbs collected. With the class item finally requiring 200 orbs to be collected in the European aerial zone, 300 solar final weapon blows, and 5 patrols on Io. Now once again, the objectives are pretty similar for each class, but with minor changes. 
And so when it comes to completing the Majestic set, here are the approaches that I would personally take with that set equipped for each class. So for the Titan, jump in and complete 10 Gambit matches. Of course you can mix and match these objectives as you like. And it's also worth mentioning that the different activities we've got in this list are worth completing with matching subclasses on different days, as we do have to collect a fairly significant number of each of the elemental orbs throughout the entire process. But the efficient way to do it would be 10 Gambit matches with a matching subclass for the featured element for the day, and then arc weapons equipped for guardian defeats with solar weapons equipped for enemy defeats if entirely possible. Things like Sunshot would be pretty good. But after you've done the 10 games, move on, and you'll need to jump into multiple Crucible matches, defeat Guardians with Arc weapons, but also it's worth using the matching subclass to the element featured for the day. However, once you've finished the Guardian kills with Arc weapons, I would move on to 10 Heroic Public Events, as well as 5 Patrols on IO. So worth doing all those activities on IO if you can. It's possible that the Contact Heroic Event will also count for this step, with the matching subclass element for the day, as well as Solar Energy weapons equipped. At this point you'll also need 20 boss kills, but between the heroic public events and the gambit matches you'll be getting those done. But after the 10 events are done, it's time to move on, and we'll need multiple strike playlist runs, so jump in there, matching your subclass to the featured element for the day, as well as with void weapons. It'll be worth running the strikes on a void featured day, if entirely possible, for collecting void orbs. But make sure you're picking up orbs as you run through the strikes. And then it's time for multiple European aerial zone runs, once again equipped with the matching subclass element for the day, but focus on solar melee kills and solar weapon kills, as well as fallen kills as much as possible during the aerial zone runs. And if you find that you need to farm more fallen kills or melee kills, jumping into the EDZ church loss sector, the atrium on the Trustland spawn is going to be a pretty efficient thing to do because you can farm fallen kills with a matching subclass for the day. But also middle tree throwing hammer for a Sunbreaker Titan is going to be huge for the melee kills because you can get one after another. And otherwise for this step to speed things up if you need it, focus on ability regen exotics like Heart of Inmost Light, Hallow Fire Heart and stuff like that. Also, for all of these steps, bear in mind that if you have a team, you can opt to fire team up and search the strike playlist until you get a strike on IO, and this will be relevant for any of the sets in the different locations. Because if you can get into a strike inside of the playlist on a particular destination with a full fire team, you could opt to just farm the patrol zone inside of that strike, completing public events, getting your weapon kills, orbs and everything like that, while you're actually in the strike playlist, which would be potentially very, very lucrative for farming out these armor sets. So could be worth thinking about for mega progress, but otherwise the stuff that we've listed kind of forms a pretty good strategy to get all of this done. And once that initial run through the list we just mentioned is complete, theoretically there should only be a few more kills and things like that to go and chase down, essentially cleaning up the rest of the requirements. Now though, moving on to the strategy for the Majestic set for Hunters. Once again, be sure to mix up the activities in this list and to do them on different days, matching your subclass to the featured element for the day in order to collect enough of the different elemental orbs. But firstly for the Hunters, once again, we'll need 10 Gambit matches. So it's worth jumping in there with the matching subclass element for the day but also void weapons for guardian defeats and arc weapons for enemy defeats if possible, as that'll allow you to make progress on a few different steps at once, but after the 10 games, move on and we'll need multiple crucible matches again with void weapon kills on guardians. And kills that your teammates make as well will help make progress here, but also it's worth being on the matching subclass element for the day once again. After this, 10 heroic public events will be required on European Dead Zone with 5 patrols on EDZ as well. As always, match the daily subclass element, but be sure to use an arc energy weapon, as those elemental weapon kills will be important. Once the events are done though, we can head into the strike playlist. Once again, match the daily element, and if you can run on arc day, it'll be super useful for collecting orbs in strikes. We need 600 strike kills, and it's worth doing these with arc weapons once again to make progress on the elemental arc kills. Once you've got the 600 kills though, we can head into the European aerial zone. Cabal kills will be super useful, but also matching subclass element kills. And we'll need to focus on void grenade kills as much as possible, especially on void day and our arc weapons. But if you need to farm any extra cabal kills out or void grenade kills, the South Mars Lost Sector, the Madim Subterrane will be really useful for this. For the Void Grenade kill specifically, something like Frosties may be pretty useful for gaining more grenade energy. Also bear in mind that if the Garden of Isilla Ascendant Challenge in the Dreaming City is up, that does have the Well of Light where you can get your ability energy back really quickly. That could be a useful one for any of these steps. And once again, you could opt to fire team up 
go into the strike playlist and see if you could get one in the European dead zone and then just head off into patrol, do events, make kills, collect orbs and all that kind of stuff. After completing the list right there, you should be left with just a few objectives needed to be completed. Now finally, for the Warlock Majestic set, the strategy is going to be very similar. And again, be sure to focus on doing different activities on different days, matching that subclass to the featured daily element in order to make enough progress collecting the various elemental orbs. But the Warlock Majestic set is going to need 10 Gambit matches. So 10 Gambit matches, run these with a matching subclass element for the day. But also, make sure you've got solar weapons for Guardian defeats in Gambit. And if you can, void weapons for normal enemy defeats. Be sure to collect orbs and all that kind of stuff, and then move on after 10 matches. This is followed up again with multiple Crucible matches with solar weapons. We'll need Guardian kills with those, but also an Arc subclass because we'll need Guardian super kills in PvP. And we actually need quite a few of these, so maybe something like Crown of Tempest would be good. And essentially, it's easiest to move on once you've got the solar weapon kills, as well as the Arc super kills done inside of the Crucible. Next step is 10 Heroic Public Events on Titan. Once again, the Contact Heroic Public Event may be useful for this, but also run 5 patrols on Titan. Make sure you're matching the subclass element for the day and using Void Energy weapons to get as many enemy kills as possible. After 10 events, we can move on and back into the Strike playlist, where we'll need a matching subclass for the element featured for the day, as well as Void Weapons. Get as many weapon kills as you can right there, and then move on after the 600 Strike kills have been done. And then finally, multiple European Aerial Zone runs again, where we'll need to kill Hive with matching subclass to the featured daily element. So get those kills as well as void weapon kills. And once you're unable to make any more progress, it'll be worth moving on. And we should mention that if you need to farm any Hive kills with a matching subclass for the day, the North Mars Lost Sector, the core terminus, is going to be a good place to do that. Once you've been through the list, you should just have a few objectives that you need to go and wrap up. And so that rounds up everything we need to know about the Majestic sets, but then, of course, we have the final kind of magnificent set of armor upgrades to do. So, once again, the Majestic set is the legendary set, but with the white glow, and this unlocks the purchasable universal ornaments from Eververse. The upgrade steps for the final set are the same for every class. The objectives have kind of varying difficulty, but these ones were posted by Jinsa, along with the image we can see on screen. So for the helmet upgrades on the Magnificent set, we need to complete a Nightfall, the Ordeal Strike on Master Difficulty. The Gauntlets will require the completion of a Nightmare Hunt on the Moon. And then the chess piece requires us to complete the Pit of Heresy on the Moon, followed by the Boots, and they need us to win matches in Trials of Osiris, of which it lists seven. But we should mention that that doesn't mean seven wins in a row or on a ticket or anything like that. It simply requires seven individual wins and then defeating the final boss in the Altars of Sorrow, which it actually lists three of. So looks like there'll be three separate runs required to get that one done. So for now, guys, that's a heads up on what will be required for the full set of upgrades for Solstice of Heroes this year. I hope you guys find the list useful. If you have any tips for other players, be sure to leave them down in the comments section. But if you have found the video helpful, a rating down below really helps me out here on the channel. Also, if you're new, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you up to date with the world of D2. But otherwise, for now, thank you for tuning in. And whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.